Jared Cannonier, the killer gorilla himself, who was victorious on Saturday night. Great fight against Kelvin Gaslam. He won via decision, went five rounds with big Kevin, Kelvin Gaslam. He is kind enough to join us now via the magic of Zoom. There he is. Still, uh, still, you know, look at that face. I mean, it's perfect. No marks on your face. Five rounds with Kelvin. Uh, got one. Oh, right there. Okay. I mean, yeah. I, 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 25 minutes with Kelvin Gaslam and you walk away with just that. That's a pretty good night. Yes, it was. It was a hard fought, hard fought night. You know, it was a lot of uh, the game plan work. As you guys can see, I'm not as uh, beaten up as uh, most of Kel Kelvin's opponents are after their uh, excursions with him. But uh, you know, I came out with my with my wounds. You know, I got some lacerations inside of my mouth. Ooh. You know, that's annoying whenever I try to eat something. My shin, my my left right foot is kind of sore from kicking him in the elbows. But um. Yeah, man, I got a good little scratch on here. I'm going to have to start telling those guys to put a lot more grease on my face because they didn't put no grease right there on that part of my face. It what happened? Like long, long nails or what? what? What's going on? How do you get the scratch? I don't know. Um, I do remember uh, catching a thumb. I think it was in the fourth or fifth round. Um, I don't know if that scratch. I think somebody, I think uh, one of the commentary mentioned I was cut before that. I don't know if that's the one they were speaking on. But, you know, I, I did have some, uh, you know, some damage uh occurred throughout the fight you know towards the middle of the fight so i didn't come out completely unscathed but i okay. am uh i did uh, avoid like serious injury so i don't have to sit on the sideline again i'm done with that stuff um and i'm ready to get back to work a lot to talk to you about um by the way uh, you mentioned the uh the cuts inside your mouth like i know when i get like a little canker sore you bite your lip that bothers me for weeks. I mean, it's the most annoying thing when you does that happen a lot? Do you get a lot of cuts inside like in your back lip there when you're fighting? Does that is that a common thing? It only happens when sparring. You know, uh you get punched in the mouth and the guard doesn't really uh cushion the, you know, uh what's the word? Protect, protect the lip, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. from mess up, you know, it's supposed to just protect that gum line so your teeth aren't just falling right out. Um <clears throat> You know, it happens. It's pretty common, and and it's common when you train too. Even in jujitsu or wrestling, you know, you may end up biting your lip or, you know, biting your tongue or biting your cheek. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to yeah. do that, but you know, it happens. It is the worst. Um, what about going five rounds? Uh, I do believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. You did go five full rounds back in I think 2014 when you were fighting in Alaska, um, but you weren't fighting at 185 back then. You were a bigger boy back then. What did it feel like yeah. in the UFC against a top-level guy like Kelvin going 25 minutes, especially considering the layoff, you hadn't fought for around 10 months? Absolutely. Um, coming back from injury, yeah, I felt I felt good. You know, I was in good shape. My, I, one, my cardio was always on point. I'm never going to go into a fight and get tired to the point where I can't fight back or defend myself. So, um, you know, I felt good. I was able to uh, keep up with Kelvin, you know what I'm saying, and, and you know, bring the fight to him as he brought the fight to me. Um, of course, it's tiring, especially at, at, the, at that pace. Um, but I wasn't exhausted. You know, I felt good. I was ready to keep going. And, um, yeah, I just felt good, you know. It was good to be back. That's for, dang, that's for damn sure. Man, you hit him with some big shots. At any point, are you thinking, like, what do I have to do to actually put this guy away? I mean, he's got a big head. He's a strong guy. He's got a great chin. He's been there with some of the best. But you hit him with some big shots, Jared. Were you thinking that to yourself at any point? No, no, I wasn't getting discouraged. You know, I was just trying to fight the man, find that, trying to find that right opening, you know. Um, hindsight's always twenty twenty. As I go back and watch the fight, I see so many of those openings. And, uh, you know, I'm like, ah, oh, oh, how come I didn't? Why didn't I? You know, so uh, I guess it's part of the process of growth, if you will. Uh, you said the game plan worked. What was the game plan? To not stand in front of him and let him throw those big left hands or that mm -hmm. big left leg that, you know, we've seen him put people away with. Um, you know, hit me a few times, you know, uh, but, uh, yeah, it wasn't a flawless victory, you know. So, uh, but, you know, I got the win either way. So I'm happy with that. You're happy with that. You should be happy with that. I was just being a, a nitpicker before talking about the apex. I'm tired of the apex. I want the the events to feel big again. I want the I want the crowd. I want it to look like it's in a different location. What about you? What was it like being at the apex? Well, it being my first time at the yeah. apex, I thought it was pretty nice. You know, okay. they had the uh, the warm up area had more mat space than that, like a room with just two mats glued together. So 
whole mat area. They had bags. They had a whole uh, slew of workout equipment if I chose to work uh, to get, you know, a good warm-up on. You know, I did a, a nice brisk walk on that uh, on the treadmill out there. Um, <clears throat> hit the bags a little bit. Um, it's right there. You know, you walk right out of the area. It's close. You know, everything is right there, you know, where you need it. It's probably so more it convenient right. for you guys, right? Like the hotel's right there. There's no nonsense. Yeah. Like you got all that equipment. I would imagine other than the fans and maybe the smaller cage, you'd probably prefer it, right? If you're fighting once, twice a year there. You know, I prefer convenience. Yeah. You know, uh, so yeah, once or twice a year. And then, a play, and then of course, go somewhere else. You know, I would like to fight in front of a big old crowd on the pay-per-view as well. So um, we'll see what happens in the future. I'm sure that's going to happen eventually, but yeah. No one talks about the smaller cage anymore. Did you notice a difference? Because when you were in Abu Dhabi with Robert, it was the bigger cage, right? Yeah. I did notice, uh, you know, with Kelvin, he pressures his fighters. So, of course, footwork was, uh, was <clears throat> what's the word? It was, of course, our path, my path to victory. I've always had good footwork. I've always implemented it uh, when needed. And it was definitely needed more against an opponent like Kelvin because he comes forward, he moves in, gets close, and try to throw those big shots. So that was the game plan, implement more of my footwork. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it played against my power, my, uh, so, I guess, sort of the uh, image of me being a big power striker and stuff like that because I was trying to move and stay in range to, to counterattack. And, but, um, you know, I guess there's something I have to work on. Staying, moving just out of the way. Maybe a little bit more, a few more inches. It was a game of inches that day, that night. So l let's take a step back here. Uh, last time we saw you prior to Saturday, Robert Whitaker fight, Abu Dhabi, big time fight, potential number one contender fight. You you don't get the W. You also break your hand, correct? Yeah, I broke the ulna in my left arm. Oh, damn. That's the, that's the scar? Yeah, that's it. Holy smokes, that's from like your wrist to your almost your elbow there. Yeah, right here. Yeah, damn. So the first one was smaller than that. The first one was a little bit smaller, like this, about this big. Okay. You know, and the plate was smaller. And then it was declared a non union. So that means the bone didn't heal back together. So they had to go back in, take all of it out. They uh, did a swab and found that it had like staff in there. Oh, no. Um, yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> And they put in a bigger rod, did a bone graft from the bone that had grew in around and on, on the bone, because it was growing, but it just wasn't filling in. So they did a bone graft and gave me a bone stimulator, started all over back in February. Um, <clears throat> physical therapy was a lot easier the second time through because of the, all the strength training and the uh, rehab of the arm we had did prior. It, uh, I guess, uh, facilitated a, a more successful healing or recovery at this time. First surgery so, was when, and, and when was second surgery? The first surgery was the 30th of October. Okay. And the second one was the 20-something, the 24th, I believe, of February. Oh, wow. So you're already almost like four months in. Was that, you know, was that kind of a strain on your mind to have to go under the knife? You're, you're thinking you're getting better, getting better, and now you got to start from scratch, essentially. Yeah. When I was going under the knife, that was the time I was expecting to be back in the octagon. You right. Know? Or at least in camp, getting ready for a contender fight, but uh, no, it didn't happen. You know, we, you know, fate decided that hey, man, we may need to sit, sit, put you on ice a little bit longer. You know, but um, it's all good. Uh, I'm over that. I'm past that. You know, the pec injury, this arm injury, that loss to Robert. I'm past that. I'm back in the win column. I'm back on the road to uh, to that title, and I'm I'm injury free right now. So good. Um, I'm trying to stay that way. You know, you went 25 minutes in, in the fight. Are you thinking, like, please, you know, like, are you thinking at all about the hand, about not re-injuring it? Was it on your mind at all? No. Uh, of course, that's what physical therapy is. That's what the physical therapy is for. So when I come back to do my job, it's not. I'm not going to be thinking, like, I can't do this. I can't do that with my hand. I can do anything with this hand. I can, you know, punch. I can block. I can handstand on it and stuff like that. So I, I've been lifting weights with it. Um <clears throat> And it's only going to get stronger. So I'm the hand, my arm is good to go. After the fight, one of the first things that you said on the mic to Daniel Cormier, which obviously drew a lot of headlines, was uh, you want to get back in there because, as you put it, you're broke. How, how, how dire is this situation? I mean, it's not dire. It's just a natural occurrence, if you will. You know, uh, 
of course, coming off of the injury, you know, I'm not balling out of control or anything like that, you know. And uh, a lot of people don't understand that <clears throat> when we have these fights that we owe people money after these fights, you know. So um, after this win, 60% of my money is already gone between the gym, between management, between taxes. On top of that, I got bills, credit cards. Uh, I got kids. I have a house up in Alaska. I got a house here. I got car payments. That money goes. Money don't last forever. And uh, right now, fighting is our only revenue. I don't have sponsors or anything like that. I ain't got nobody. Uh, you know, fighting is my only focus. I'm not out here doing commercials or anything like that, you know. Nobody's asking me to be in the next Marvel movie. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, and not not being able to fight for the last 10 months, you know, put a strain on our pockets. So um, I'm glad to have gotten back in there. I'm glad that I get two checks plus that main event bonus. Um, and I'm glad I'm not injured so I can do it again. I don't need a, like a super quick turnaround, but, um, you know, the division is moving on. We got big fights coming up this weekend. And, uh, you know, and I'm ready to go. So, you know, I'm not, you know, everybody's saying, you know, the UFC needs to pay its fighters. In my situation, when I quit my job, I was able to get paid from the UFC to sustain myself. You know, so I'm not here to say the UFC isn't paying me because I'm getting paid pretty good from the UFC. It's just that money don't last forever. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm not here balling out of control. I'm not splurging or anything like that. You know, I'm not stupid. I don't spend my money on dumb stuff, but um, it's just life, I guess. I do want, I mean, I would like to get paid. I am a high level, elite level athlete. I would like to get paid like elite level athletes, like the ones in the NFL and the NBA and the, the ones are playing baseball and soccer and doing all that stuff. You know, they, they get sponsors, but they get, you know, they don't need sponsors. All they need is that, that check from the, uh, that three letter organization. So that's what we need here in the UFC. That's who, that's who we're all like, you know? So, uh, yeah. I want to I want to preface my next question with this because a lot of sensitive people out there they'd be like, oh, here's Ariel stirring the pot. No, this is not me stirring the pot. This is me talking to a high level, I think, top three ranked middleweight in the world in the number one MMA organization who just fought on ESPN in the main event and won that fight who might be one one away from fighting for the belt. That's why people have big eyes when they hear something like this, because you said the word sustain. You, the point of all of this isn't to just get by and sustain. You're a professional athlete. The point of all of this is prize fighting. The point of all of this is to get money and to be set for life when you're done fighting, not to just skirt by so that you have to find another job when you retire. And so that's why I think you have a lot of people speaking on your behalf, a lot of fans saying, yo, this isn't right. And so I want to ask you about the sponsor thing as well. Why no sponsors? How no sponsors? I know you can't wear them in the cage, but like you got Instagram, you got, to, and I noticed you didn't use it a lot for this fight. You used it a lot for the last fight, but you, didn't, but you could get paid off that too, right? No, no one knocking on your door? No, man, nobody. I mean, I probably got people in my DMs, but nothing like, uh, no big checks, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I ain't trying to collect, you know, pennies from here, pennies from there. And I got to work for 10 different people just to get enough to say my house bill for the month. No, that ain't, no, I ain't trying. No, I'm not working for pennies. I, like you said, I'm a high level athlete who just did all that stuff you just said. You know what I'm saying? I should have. I should have six figures in my account that I don't even need to touch. You're absolutely Agreed. right about that. I shouldn't have to worry about, man, if I get injured and I can't fight anymore, what the hell am I going to do? And unfortunately, that is a situation that a lot of us fighters are in, that I'm in myself. You know what I'm saying? My wife is 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 getting ready to get up and go to work. You know what I'm saying? That Which is against what we the structure that we have as a family. You know what I'm saying? We, I, she's doing, she has does so much here at the house, maintaining the home, taking care of the kids. You know what I'm saying? making sure everything is where it needs to be so I can go and do my thing and I have to worry about everything else that's going on. But uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to say, well, yeah, yeah, whatever, man. Uh, like I said, it's a three-letter It's a three -letter, letter organization, the biggest one. It's definitely, it has to be well over four point whatever billion it sold four years ago. So, um we should be getting paid a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Um, over the past 10 months, did you have to go get another job while you were on the sidelines? I mean, my wife started training to start working. Okay. You know, so she she's doing the intern part right now. She, she's, she's working without getting paid, but she's on a full-time schedule. 
So I'm having to, you know, take the kids to school, bring the kids home, help with homework until she gets off. And hopefully I can go to train tonight and tomorrow, you know, at nights. But I can't, like, go to pro practice because I pick my kids up at 3, 315. And it's usually the lines wrong. It's a line at the schools and stuff to pick up the kids. So you don't get out of it. It's like 4. You know, practice starts at 3, ends at 430. So this shit, you know, the lack of money is definitely cutting in on my training time. So uh, that's and that's what it was when I worked in the, for the FAA. I had to go over there and work ten hours, and it was cutting on my training time. So, not the same position, but you know, which I'm still, you know, it's still a fight to get out of that. You know, financial liberty is what we all want. You know, I don't want to be stuck in this uh, in this matrix. You know, where we have to work for money. When you know, my mom is sixty. My mom is damn near seven years old. You know, she shouldn't be working, but she is. My mom needs to retire. You know, so. Uh, we got, you know, I got, you know, she got, we have, I got little brothers and sisters at home. You know, we got a butt, we got a house, I got a house for the kids, you know what I'm saying, that are looking at me, you know what I'm saying, looking at the other men in my family, you know, and uh, not looking at me, but, you know what I'm saying, that are looking at my mama to take care of them. You know, I got young kids in my mouth, in my mama's house. Uh, of course, I got young kids myself, and I want to look after my entire family, you know what I'm saying? My Again, my mama needs to retire. So, uh I've been, that was been one of my first things that I, that I, uh, one of the first goals that I had when I got in the UFC was to make it so she can do that. So, uh, yeah, I would, (laughs) I would like that to happen real soon. Six and a half years in the UFC. Does it bum you out? Do you ever have a moment where you're like, I'm six and a half years in, what happens when this is over and there's not a lot to show for it? Do you, do you get worried about that? No, I'm not concerned to myself with, what hasn't happened or, you know what I'm saying? Um, At heart, you know, I'm a hustler. I can make stuff happen. I can go anywhere and do anything I want to and make money if I need it. Um, I choose to do this because I enjoy it. You know, I, again, I had a six figure job before I quit and joined and came to UFC full time. So I'm capable of doing just about anything I want to. All I got to do is put my mind to it, put my hand to it and make it happen. Um, I'm also surrounded by people who can do that. My wife is that type of person. My family, we look, we care, we look after each other, we we take care of each other. So I'm not saying that I'm um that um I'm also surrounded by people who can do that. My wife is that type of person. My family, we look, we care, we look after each other, we we take care of each other. So I'm not saying that I'm um that um <clears throat> what the word out on the limb or anything like that, you know, cause I, pe- I got people who I can rely on thankfully for that. But, um, I, I want to make it on my own dime. You know what I'm saying? I should be able to do that. And which is what I'm doing in the UFC. Uh, so yeah, you know, uh, bigger fights should definitely mean bigger paychecks. I have to say, and again, I know there are going to be people cause trust me, I, I've heard it all at this point. There's going to be people saying, that I'm just trying to stir the pot here. This bums me out. This depresses me to hear you talk like this because you deserve, I mean, you you go in there and you walk into a cage with all due respect to some of the other athletes and what they do and the kind of risks that they have to take versus the kind of risks that you guys have to take, what you do for a living. It's it's just, when you see and hear how the sausage is made, it's a bummer. It's a bummer because you deserve, at the very least, the the show win model to me is so outdated and archaic. Like you walk into a main event on ESPN for the UFC, you deserve guaranteed pay. Like it's not like oh, I hope you get a finish and you can uh, you know do something spectacular to get on Sports Center and then we'll give you double your pay. No, you should get that double pay up front if you ask me. But you know I know I'm kind of preaching to the choir here, and I hope you know that not only from me but from the 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 fans as well who've been speaking about this for the past 24 hours. Like they want to see you guys get paid. They want you to be making millions of dollars. They want you to make what boxers are making for the most part, who are main eventing shows on ESPN. And so I hope it changes and maybe it changes with the next fight. You know, you get a big fight against maybe a Darren Till or Derek Brunson. And then the next one I would imagine is a title fight, right? Like in my mind, given the fact that Izzy and Robert aren't fighting for the rest of the year, you're probably one fight away from fighting for the belt. Do you view it the same way? I do. I absolutely do. Um, and like I said, in the octagon, I'm not trying to wait until after them to see if I can step right in line. So, uh, we'll see what happens next week with Tim and Brunson. I hear rumors that Costa and, and Vittori are going to be thrown down. Yes. Um, so those are a few names that, you know, that you know, we can line up to give me my contenders fight. 
and uh, give me another check. And um, yeah, again, I'm not complaining. It's the, it's the UFC pay structure. We sign our contracts. Sure. Um, but yes, I, I do want a bigger check, but I don't want to be like these guys you see in the NFL. With, you know, I'm not I'm not one of those guys that be going out stunting on people and flossing and, and splurging like that. You know, um, there's b- bigger and better things I can be doing with my money. You know, what I'm saying there's land that needs to be bought because there's other people buying up all the land and they don't care about us. So um, there's land that needs to be bought. There are specific businesses that need to be open, holistic businesses that need to be. Uh, cater to if you will and um and i want to open up a gym my damn self you know what i'm saying uh, i want to open up a gym in dallas actually because uh i didn't have that opportunity growing up as a child and uh, i don't see any uh martial arts being given to the people in the area with where i grew up so i want to bring martial arts to oak cliff that De- oak cliff texas right there uh polk street camp wisdom wheatland you know what i'm saying uh i want to bring the high level miss martial arts there and uh because there's a lot of potential, you know, there's a lot of people, a lot of people, young people in there. There's a lot of potential for greatness out of that city, man. So um, right now, the city only caters to the main three ball games, sports, baseball, football, and basketball. And, uh, you know, uh, we need to bring martial arts. You know, I think martial arts brings a lot, brings a different element of, uh, of uh, what's the word, of, athlete, of athletics. To uh to the world, if you will. Thirty seven, Jared. How many more years do you want to do this for? As long as I can go, man. I love what I'm doing. I'm having fun doing it. I'm capable. I'm able. I'm, I'm you know what I'm saying I'm my body is able to do it at a high level. So uh I want to do it as long as I can. You know, I want to be 40, 50 years old even, you know, holding that belt. <laughs> However long it takes me to get sixteen of those red, red, uh Red diamonds on that belt. That's right. And and I want to say something, if I can, if you don't mind, to the MMA media, because I know that people will write about this, and you have to listen to what Jared just said there. I'm happy. I want to keep going. So I respect you tremendously for speaking up and for saying, I want more. I think I deserve more. But you're not coming across, at least to me, as someone who is ungrateful or disgruntled, you're just telling it like it is. And so I don't want you to get in trouble. You know, I I know the way the game is played. You get in trouble, this and that. I have a lot of respect for you for telling it like it is, for just telling the truth, for not sugarcoating, but also at the same time saying, I'm happy and I want to keep going and I have great dreams and aspirations in this sport. So I think it's important when people write about this and what you're saying, because not everyone has the courage that you do to say, and I don't even, it's crazy to even attach the word courage to it, but let's be honest, that's the landscape. It's important to add that you are also still happy and, and grateful for the situation that you are in. I hope I'm not putting words in your mouth there, but that's my read on the situation. No, you're absolutely right. I'm, I've never been happy. This is the best job I've ever had in my life. Um, um, <clears throat> I think the UFC takes very good care of its athletes. Um, they make sure we have everything we need, especially during fight week. Um, and uh, you know who does? Who else? Who else? You know who doesn't want to fight? And like you said, it's the premier organization for mixed martial arts in the world. Um, they do We're you know being a, I'm, I'm part of history in that regard. And um, again, I'm grateful and I'm blessed to be a part of this organization. Yes, I do want more money, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't want to – I would like one fight to be able to hold me up for at least two years, not one, mm-hmm. you know. And then off of that, you know, we, and then we just mo- we build off of that, you know what I'm saying? So, um, but, yeah, uh, I'm not one to – anyway, yeah. Yeah, no, I feel you. Is. I feel you, Jared. Well, um it's very clear that you are a top contender in the UFC. Izzy himself has talked about wanting to fight you and uh, and also wanting to um, test himself against you, feeling like you are a, a rightful contender. You're back. Big win over a guy that took him to very deep waters. Wasn't the same kind of fight. I know Styles make fights, but I think you maybe get the winner of Brunson versus Till, and uh, and then we take it from there and see where you go and, and, and probably get the winner of the, uh, the Whitaker-Israel-Adesanya fight. Congratulations. Welcome back. Great performance. Thank you for speaking the truth. Thank you for being honest. And thank you, as always, for coming on, Jared. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm always ever honest. You know what I'm saying? I'm never going to hide my truth for anybody. Even if they think it's wrong or right or whatever, it's my truth. So that's what it is. 
Um, all I can do is just try to present it to the world if I want to, as best as as best and as articulate as I can. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm just transmitting energy. You know, this is just how I feel about the situation. I do want more money, but I'm happy. Uh, I'm happy with the check I got yesterday, or was it Saturday night? Yeah. You know, um, I'm content with it. You know, it's it's enough to get me and my family by. And uh, on to the next one. Amen. Talk to you soon, Jared. Congrats. Thank you, Eric. All right, there he is, the killer gorilla himself, Jared Cannonier.